Alright, what is going on guys? It's Taz here, and welcome back to the channel. Now today we've got for you guys is my season overview as well as finale review for season 4 of Gotham. So spoiler warning for the entirety of season 4 of Gotham, but with that out of the way, let's continue. Yesterday we got the long awaited conclusion to arguably the best season of Gotham, that being season 4, in the form of episode 22 or the finale, titled No Man's Land. And now that we know that Gotham has been renewed for a 5th and final season, that will be airing a short 13 episode count during the mid-season in 2019 and we will be getting that proper ending to the show finally seeing Bruce fully transform into the caped crusader protector of Gotham the Batman himself and now this is some bittersweet news knowing that season 5 of Gotham will be its final season but at least we will be getting a proper conclusion to such a great show that was started all those years ago so without any further ado guys let's get into the season overview and finale review for Gotham season Season 4. Season 4 of Gotham carried in the footsteps of the previous three seasons having quite a few different storylines going on at the same time and going on really throughout the entirety of the season. We had the storyline with Bruce that was pretty much the main story of the season in my opinion. He started off going out on the streets as a vigilante trying to make a difference in Gotham but then it eventually escalated to him being forced to kill Ra's al Ghul towards the middle part of the season which led to sort of a downward spiral for Bruce leading him down sort of this like jerk path pretty much I guess that's really the best way to explain it he was pretty much a jerk towards the middle of the season but then things kind of picked back up and he realized okay I need to go back out there I need to sort of you know go back to helping Gotham and everything and that's sort of where we led to in the finale with Bruce sort of getting more into that vigilante role and more into that sort of role as hey I need to be the protector of Gotham alongside Bruce's storyline this season we also had Selena kind of struggling to find her place within Gotham them as well. She started off with the sirens towards the beginning part of the season but then eventually realized that hey maybe the sirens aren't the best group of people to be hanging out with and then she sort of started going more to you know helping out Bruce towards the later parts of the season giving us kind of a mirror to that sort of Batman Catwoman relationship that we all know from the comics. Another storyline going on this season was Jim Gordon getting more into that leadership role at the GCPD. We actually saw him get his promotion to captain this season and and he is well on his way to becoming commissioner of the GCPD eventually. He's getting a lot more respect at the GCPD. Everybody's kind of following him now and looking up to him as a leader of the GCPD. And that's the kind of Commissioner Gordon that we all know and that we all want to see on Gotham one day. Some other storylines going on this season included the whole Lee and Riddler thing that kind of picked up more towards the middle of the season. We also had the sort of whole Barbara versus the League of Assassins and her kind of making up her own version of the League. League, uh, taking all of the women of the League of Assassins and kind of making her own like League of Ladies or whatever you want to call it. And then we also had Ra's al Ghul obviously in there. He was dead for a big chunk of the season but then he eventually came back and played a big role within the finale. And then we also had a whole bunch of stuff going on with Butch and Solomon Grundy. He was kind of connected to the whole Riddler and Lee storyline more towards the beginning of the season and then he eventually got his memories back and everything and he was then more connected with Penguin trying to you know, go on that journey to figure out how to turn himself back into the normal version of Butch, which we saw in the finale. And now, in the last few episodes of the season, that's really when things kind of picked up, when Jerome got out of Arkham, and he started wreaking havoc in Gotham, which eventually led to his death and the creation of Gotham's true Joker, or, you know, I don't really want to get into it in this video, but Gotham's version of the Joker at the moment, it led to the creation of the Jeremiah version of the Joker, and that sort of carried on throughout the rest of the season and into the finale. So the season 4 finale for Gotham picked up right in the aftermath of that one bad day that Jeremiah caused not only for Bruce but for the city of Gotham. We had Bruce and Alfred rushing Selina to the hospital at the beginning of the episode picking up pretty much right where I thought it would. And then after the ER we kind of transferred over to the GCPD and we saw that Jeremiah was actually locked up in one of the GCPD sort of holding cells and Gordon and the rest of the cops had Jeremiah ready to be transferred to Arkham just like his brother. But things didn't go according to plan when the sort of military police came into the city and started ordering around the cops of the GCPD and sort of told them, hey, we need Bruce Wayne in here to talk to Jeremiah because there's some more bombs around the city and he's the only person that Jeremiah would talk to. So that's when things of the episode pretty much picked up right there was when Bruce was brought into the GCPD 
by the military police. And with this, we got the whole interrogation scene between Bruce and Jeremiah, and this was totally one of my favorite parts of the episode. Definitely one of my favorite scenes, gave me some very Batman Joker vibes, and with some really nice foreshadowing on how the relationship is going to be going into the future, and it kind of gave me some like Arkham City vibes. I mean, there's a lot of other things that give me like Arkham City, Arkham Knight, Arkham Origins, all these different Arkham games. This whole episode really gave me Batman Arkham vibes, and I'll get more into that when we get to those parts of the episode, but this part right here with the whole conversation and interrogation between Jeremiah and Bruce, I thought that that was great. But after the interrogation, with the help of Ra's al Ghul, Jeremiah ended up taking Bruce from the GCPD to that abandoned building that Ra's al Ghul wanted him at from the beginning of the episode, and that kind of led into the big action part and the big kind of final showdown between Bruce and Jeremiah and Ra's al Ghul towards the end of the episode. But in the background of this episode, we had the whole Riddler and Lee and Gordon thing going on, as well as the Penguin, Tabitha, and Butch thing, but I'll touch on that a bit more later. So with Bruce being brought to Roz, we got another very comic booky pitch and very comic booky scene by Roz, talking to Bruce and pretty much explaining his plan for Gotham and why Gotham needs to fall, why it needs to burn, and that from the ashes that the Dark Knight of Gotham can rise, that obviously being a reference to Batman. So pretty much Roz al Ghul was talking to Bruce, telling him, hey, I'm going to destroy your city only because I want to create Batman, and that was a very Ra's al Ghul thing to do. But just when Bruce thought he was going to have to stand watch while Ra's al Ghul and Jeremiah destroyed the city, the cavalry arrived, Alfred came in with some new friends that he met earlier on in the episode, or that he called on for help earlier on in the episode. So the unlikely team up of Alfred, Tabitha, Barbara, along with Penguin came in to go help and save Bruce. So with Bruce's rescue, we got another one of my favorite parts of the episode, a pretty awesome fight scene between Bruce and Alfred and everybody fighting against Jeremiah as well as Ra's al Ghul. And this fight led to something happening that I didn't think was going to happen again. Um, but we had Barbara with the knife that she had put back together, the knife that only Bruce can hold and kill Ra's al Ghul with, and Barbara took Bruce's hand, put it on the knife, and then goes and stabs Ra's al Ghul again. So Ra's al Ghul is disintegrating, he's like, oh Bruce, I don't feel so well, and then he disintegrates, um, but you know, he gets killed again, and I didn't think this was gonna happen, I didn't think Ra's al Ghul was gonna die twice in the same season, but you know, he's dead again, and I don't really know what to think about this. I don't know if Roz is going to come back or not. He, again, before he dies, he kind of tells Bruce, he's like, hey, dude, become Batman. I'm dead. That's about it. <laughs> so I, I don't really know. I don't know if he's going to come back, but it was a very cool fight scene and it ended with some pretty cool effects with Roz kind of, you know, disintegrating again, Avengers Infinity War style. But after the fight, we had Bruce go back to the hospital to go find Selena. But after the fight was over, we didn't see exactly where Jeremiah went. All we know is that Jeremiah got away and he will obviously be coming back next season. But alongside this fight in the sort of abandoned warehouse or wherever they were, the Gotham bridges were blowing up and we had Gordon out there on the bridges trying to save people and everything. I thought that this was another very cool thing that happened alongside in this episode. So it was nice to see Gordon out there protecting the city as well. But back to Bruce and Alfred going to check on Selena. When they get back to the hospital, we learn that the damage to her spine could possibly be permanent. And this is where Bruce makes the big decision of the episode or really of the entire season. He ends up telling Alfred to go with Selina, go with her, and get away from Gotham, and Bruce is going to stay behind and do what he is meant to do. He's going to stay behind and protect Gotham and be the protector that Gotham needs. He's going to become the Batman. Well, I mean, not exactly. He's not going to become Batman right now, but we all know where it's going to lead later on down the line, and I thought that this was a great scene between Bruce and Alfred, and I think it's, again, a very Batman thing for Bruce to do. He's like, hey, you got to go take care of Selina. You got to go make sure that she's okay, but I'm going to stay behind because I've got a job to do. So after this, we go back to Hugo Strange's lab that we were in earlier on in the episode. I didn't talk about it because it wasn't too important at that point, but now we're back to it. And we see that Butch was actually cured by Hugo Strange. He's back to normal. He's looking normal. He doesn't have any of the Solomon Grundy left in him. And it's a nice happy moment between him and Tabitha. They're able to, you know, be back together and everything. And everything seems to be going well for Butch 
Butch and Penguin's there. He's like, oh yeah, I'm happy for you. I did this for Butch, but not for Tabitha and everything is what he said. And then we get the part of the episode that I was not expecting. I didn't think I could take it, but yeah, we had Penguin actually kill Butch. And that was pretty surprising. I didn't think that he was going to end up killing Butch. But again, when Penguin actually ended up explaining everything to Tabitha, it made sense because I had completely forgot that back in season two, Tabitha killed his mom. Uh, am I the only one that completely forgot about that? It was so long ago. But it does make sense as to why Penguin did this. He did it to get back at Tabitha. It just shows pretty much how crazy Penguin is. And that's why I love Penguin on this show so much is because he's so unpredictable and he can flip on a dime. And that's pretty great. And I love that about this Gotham's version of Penguin. So RIP to my dude, Butch or Grundy. I mean, he's going to be sorely missed in the next season. Who knows? Maybe somehow he'll come back because nobody ever stays dead in Gotham. I mean, he died at the end of last season. Who's to say he's not going to come back next season? But from what the actor has been saying on Twitter and everything, it seems like he really is going to be gone in the next season. So it is definitely sad to have to say goodbye to this character. But after this, we get the start of my favorite part of the episode. We get a montage of all the villains in the city going around and taking over their territory on the evacuated Gotham. And we also have Bruce going around beating up criminals looking for Jeremiah in a very Batman Arkham City Arkham Knight style and I absolutely loved it. But right at the end we have Gordon activate what will eventually turn into the bat signal. We got Gordon actually activating this proto bat signal. We saw Bruce look up in the sky. He went over to the activated or I guess now just sort of a spotlight signal and we get an amazing scene between Bruce and Gordon sort of talking about when they first met and what they're going to have to be doing next season and going to have to you know save Gotham from pretty much save Gotham from itself with everybody going crazy now that Gotham is totally evacuated and is as the title suggests a no man's land and that is pretty much where we leave it going into season five with Bruce and Gordon looking off the roof of the GCPD at the sort of destroyed Gotham that is in chaos and looking at all of the work that they're going to be having to do next season to restore Gotham to its former glory and I think that this was such a great way to end off the season with Bruce and Gordon accepting their roles in the city and knowing what must be done to protect Gotham City in what is now a no man's land and this is just some amazing setup for next season as well as we did see some new villains being introduced in the form of Man Bat and Orphan along with some returning villains like Firefly and Mr. Freeze and everybody going and taking up their positions around Gotham City. But overall guys Gotham season 5 looks like it's shaping up to be an amazing season looking like it's almost going to be kind of like a Batman Arkham TV show and even though it ended in such a way this season that it wasn't too cliffhangery if the show was not renewed because it's pretty obvious what is most likely going to be happening from here having Bruce and Gordon mold more into the respective roles as Batman and Commissioner Gordon and if I had to nitpick anything about the finale or really just the season in general it would probably be the Lee and Riddler stuff just felt a little too disconnected at points but Hugo Strange will be bringing them back at some point so that will be pretty interesting and also I wish that we had more echo in the episode or at all in the finale and I just wish that we kind of had more of the character in general I mean it's pretty obvious that she is Gotham's Harley Quinn and hopefully she will return with Jeremiah next season but it was just kind of weird to see her introduced and then just kind of disappear but other than that, I thought everything else was great. Even if I didn't touch on it in the video, I think that pretty much everything that happened within the finale was awesome and it made for one great finale. And overall, guys, this was definitely my favorite season of Gotham so far. It just keeps getting better and better each season. And it's pretty sad to see that next season in season five will be its last. But it's nice to see that we will be getting a proper conclusion to this amazing Batman origin story. So overall, guys, what did you think of the season four finale for Gotham? Gotham, and what did you think of season four overall? Did you love all of the comic booky things set up within the finale? And does it make you more excited to see what will happen next season? I want to know your thoughts on all of this down in the comments below. But until next time, guys, it's been Taz, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And I promise you, however dark and scary the world might be right now, there will be light. There will be light, Rose. I remember the night we met.
told me the world may seem dark. But there is light. <laughs>